Kia ora and welcome. My name is Chris, I'm one of the assistant pastors here at The Render Gathering. Hey, it's great to have you join us this morning. Now, whatever platform you're on or wherever you are, can you share that? That'd be awesome. I pray that you enjoy this message that we have for you this morning. It's life changing. It will actually change your life. So stay with us the few minutes we have. But for now, we're going to share a couple of songs with praise and worship. So enjoy that before you get into the message. We want to we make this time a blessed time for you. So enjoy the time you have with us. And stay tuned because it doesn't last that long. and worship time. You know, the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. So I pray that your breath and everything that comes out of it is about praising Him. So enjoy the rest of our day here. We've got one more song for you.
Wasn't that a fabulous, fabulous time of praise and worship? Hey, we're going to close our time up very shortly. But before we do that, I want to remind you of this. We have hangouts. Hangouts are just a time where we get together, we fellowship, we enjoy each other's company, and we do some out of this world things, crazy things. But they're, they're things that we all love to do. And that's what we do here at the Renda Gathering, just to celebrate being together in fellowship. <music> Just standing here with our amazing pastor Lisa, um, who's been hosting all of our prayer nights. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to her. What motivates her and um, what really encourages her to to do these prayer nights? Well, I totally believe in the power of prayer. And what really motivated me to encourage people in prayer is I was sick and tired of seeing people, especially Christians, walk around thinking like I'm just stuck in this place. I can't do anything about it. Like just what thinking they had no way out, but it's not true. So our next prayer night will be in October. It'll be the second week of the school holidays on a Wednesday night. So make sure you save the date right now. Make sure you get your family here. So hope to see you there. Awesome, be there. How important is your role as a father? Very important. I mean, the way that I think is definitely influenced from my parents. You know, there's many times where I'm like, you know, what would my dad do? So my grandfather's a big influence on me. Uh, my stepdads as well, both of my stepfathers. Um, family comes first. Sometimes you got to make sacrifices so that other people can gain. And just watching him growing up as a kid, um, you know, he always worked hard, made sure that we got what we needed for school and all that type of stuff. So I looked at my father who had no father and he struggled and I could see that. And he was an awesome father, despite the fact that he had no father. And what is stopping our young people from achieving anything they want to achieve in this uh, very uh, challenging uh, society that we live in. Hey, it's a time of being generous. And you know, for me, it's about giving back to God. You know, the Bible talks about a farmer that sowed a seed. When he sowed that seed, God multiplied it. You know, he multiplied it so much that God opened the doorways to heaven and threw down a blessing on them. We want you to be blessed today, but you need to sow into God's kingdom. And that's us here at The Rinda Gathering. Sow and God will give back to you and he'll give back to you abundantly. I want to acknowledge those that give to God because it's in that that God can bless you. And we're going to close this time with a prayer. So if you could just bow your heads with me and we're going to pray at this time. So let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this time that we can give into your kingdom. Father, it's in that 
that Father, you open the floodgates of heaven and throw out so much of a blessing on us, on us that we cannot contain it. So we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that we are able to give to you. I pray you speak to people's hearts and they may see the value of your kingdom and what it means to give to you. So praise you, Lord, and we end this prayer in the name that is above all names, the name that gives back to everybody, the name of Jesus. Amen. Kia ora and welcome to The Render Gathering. My name is Cliff Thompson and we welcome you here today wherever you are, wherever you're watching on whatever device. It really is awesome to have you here. I get the privilege to pastor here at this church and um, to be able to bring the word of God to you in whatever space, place uh, that you are at or that you are in. I do ask and I do uh, wonder how you're doing and I sincerely hope and pray that you are doing okay and that you are moving closer to God every single day. This uh, theme that we've got this month is simply called mask. And we think about the masks that we wear, that's the, uh, the journey we want to go on over the next month. I want to talk about a number of topics and a number of things scripturally that will help us. But when we think about this concept, this concept of masks that we wear, we can think about why do we wear them? For what reasons would a person be disingenuous or put them on? What are we trying to hide? And not only what are we trying to hide, but maybe what are we trying to, to portray to the world? What is it that, uh, that's in our life? What is it about us that isn't good enough that we could just be ourselves? Confident enough maybe that we could just be who we are, that we have to put a mask on. So it's either that reason or the other reason is we're trying to cover something and see, sometimes putting on a mask is not just um, for the purpose of trying to hide stuff. It can also be we're trying to not let people in to help us because we don't want to be a bother. You know, psychologically, uh, in sort of psychology and in the well-being space of the world, the, the concept of masking comes up often. And masking can be problematic when we're when people really want to know how we're doing, when we really need help, but we put a front on. We put a different face on for the world to see. And we might be going through a tough time and through some difficulties, but we put a mask on that says to the world, I'm okay. So someone will ask you, oh, how are you doing? And we say, what? Oh, I'm good. I'm all good. It's all okay. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, life's going well. But actually deep down, there are some real hurts. There are some real pains. There are some real challenges. And I don't know about you, but I've encountered so many people in this world at this time and it doesn't matter what walk of life they've been in from um, from pastors to people on the street to people in the sporting world to people in the production world it doesn't matter someone's got something going on and the real challenge within us is not how do we tell the world about every issue that we've got going on or every struggle or every challenge but how do we know when it's safe enough to talk to someone when it's okay to not be okay, when it's all right to put down the mask and just be who you are. And more importantly, be who God called you to be. I want to speak about that as a starter, as a kickstarter to our series this month. And I hope that it resonates with you. I hope that it helps you through the word of God. Remember, these are not my words. Uh, they might be my, they may be my interpretations or my um, delivery of God's word, but these are his words, his reassurance, his challenge, but also his way forward. 
You with me so far? So either pull out the Bible that folds or glows, whatever you have available to you, around you. Uh, Let's get into God's word here right now. In the book of Genesis chapter 3, so we go back to the beginning. And some of us may be familiar with the story. And if you're not familiar with the story, this is the book, the beginning, right? Of where creation came into and, and mankind came into being. And we have this scenario So God has created heavens and the earth. He's now created man and he's created for her a helper. That is woman, right? So you've got man and woman, Adam and Eve, as they are known, walking through the garden together. They've got this relationship with God. And God said to them, you can have access to everything and anything that you want. There's just a condition though. Of all the things you're going to eat and partake of and have access to, Don't eat from that tree. Because when you do, the story goes that you will surely die. And we know that today as being not just not eternal beings, but also we will begin the process of distance from God. That we would, in in our flesh, but also in our spirit, um, become disconnected from the life and the intention that God had planned for us right from the beginning. And look, and I'm summarizing the story here, but that's where we pick the story up. So what's happened is the serpent, the Bible says, has come along and he's tempted Eve. And as the serpent has tempted Eve, uh, has sort of propelled her and asked some questions and challenged this thought like, you're not going to die if you partake of this. And we pick the story up from there. So Eve has partook of the apple and she then you know her her man adam has come along and she said to him hey i haven't died want some right offers him the apple and now he has to make a decision he partakes himself and this is where we picked the story up from they've realized something here now as and i'm going to pick up from verse six so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food so she saw And she forgot what God had called her to and and given instruction around. And I think this speaks to our character and our nature. She saw it for what was good for her. And I think that's a real important start point is that we don't look at things in the world as just what's good for me. You know, one of the greatest or saddest things I think that have come out the back of COVID is that it was sort of one of the things that I hoped that would push humankind toward, which was... Life's so short, and if life's so short, let's make the best of it. If life is so short, let's love the ones we that we uh, have. We get to live life with, and if life's so short, let's serve God with everything. But what's happened is we've sort of come to this conclusion: life's so short, therefore, I better do what's good for me. I better get mine because life's so short. So we have Eve here. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, it was good for her for her need that it was pleasant to the eye and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and she ate. She also gave it to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both, both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Now that's important because now we see the first, the beginnings of masking, covering up, who God actually made us to be. See, when God makes you how you are and makes you a certain way and makes you fit for purpose, there isn't shame in that. There isn't embarrassment when God has made you who you are, but the embarrassment and the shame comes from the condemnation of the world. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not encouraging people to strip down, strip off and do that. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that the way God intended his plan for us, the way he has made us, when he made Cliff and he made all these gifts in me, and we talk about it today, we frame it up as imposter syndrome a little bit. Meaning in some ways, like I can be in a room or be around people and I don't feel good enough. I feel like I'm having to pretend. I feel like I'm not enough to walk in these spaces. But you know, if God's made you a certain way and God opened a door and God called you in, Yes, he needs you to feel that you need to still trust in him. He doesn't want you to be overconfident that you would only trust in yourself. But he wants you to know that the way he made you and and how you are and the gifts he's put in you are enough. That if you serve him with them, 
There's no shame in that. And here we get that first instance of covering up, masking, being ashamed of the way we are and now becoming something that we are not. You with me? Here we go. Both of the eyes were opened and they knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day with Adam and his wife. Uh, sorry, Adam and his wife. And they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. How many of us, when we're trying to cover up from God and we're trying to uh, mask who he's made us and what he's called us, we want to try to caught us to when we're trying to hide from his calling in our lives do we we do the very thing here we're hiding from the presence of him that he wouldn't find us but now here's the real point i want to bring up then the lord god called to adam and this is the title of my message today the theme is called mask but here's the title of my message with the masks that we wear and the covering up that we do where are you and that's what god asked adam and eve as he walked through the garden. Now, it wasn't that God didn't know where they were. God knew everything. But he's asking the question, as I'm asking you down this camera today, where are you? What's going on in your life? Where are you at? Are you the person I'm talking to that's been a bit lost? That's been covering up? That's been hiding from God? That's been masking what he's called you and created you to be. The question is, first of all, where are you? Where are you at? Where are you going? Where are you headed? Where are you now? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. See, he didn't say I was afraid because I disappointed you. I was afraid because I wasn't doing what I was called to. He said, I was afraid because of what was laid bare. I was afraid because of my own ego, my own pride. I was afraid because of the things that impact me for myself. Are you seeing that? Are you hearing that? Are you sensing that? That this became that selfish thing that I talked about at the beginning. And then he said, and this is the other important question I want to ask you as I ask myself in preparing this. God said to him, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded that you should not eat? Now, God again knew the answer to both questions. But the question I want to land on your heart and your spirit right now is who told you that you were naked? Who told you? That you had to cover up. Who told you the way that God made you is not good enough? People, who have you been around? Who are the voices that you are letting in? What is the time that you're spending and where are you spending that time around voices that either push you closer to God or pull you further from Him and further from the purpose for which you were created? Creating us to feel ashamed, to feel like we need to cover up what God called us to, what God made us. That's not the plan of him. With that all being said, I want to leave you with a passage of scripture here to encourage you. And I hope that it does. And I hope as you go today and you think about the start of this message, and we're going to talk about a whole lot of really interesting concepts and topics and thoughts, but I want to land you with those two questions and then I'll give you this passage of scripture. Right? Is um, why... Are you hiding? Where are you? And the second one is, who told you you were naked? Who have you been around? Who are you connecting with? Who are you letting speak into your life? Is it truth or are they lies? I want you to remember this today as you go into your week. Turn with me to John chapter 16, verses 33. I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will, have, you will have trouble. But take heart, the scripture says. I have overcome the world. Maybe you're that person that's been masking a little, running a little, hiding a little, masking a lot, running a lot, hiding a lot. 
Whatever that is, wherever you are, whatever's been going on for you, God is saying to us here that it's okay. I have overcome the world. I am the hope. I am the way back. Come into my presence. Come partake of me. Be with me. Not just come to church. That's part of it. But come to me. Come to learn. Come to grow and come and be in relationship with Jesus Christ. I hope today that that compels you to move closer to Jesus. If that is you and you need to make a decision for him today, I'm going to ask you, yes, to listen to the words of this prompt and repeat after them and then you are saved. But I'm going to ask you to go one step different or one step further, which is if you aren't saved and you're watching this with someone who is, yes, the words are going to play, but maybe would you let them pray for you and take you through that right now? Would you let someone work with you on your journey? Because that's what we're here to do, actually evangelize Christ, but to disciple you, to teach you, to journey with you. And I want to encourage you to do that. If you're in the room with someone, would you ask them that question? Are you ready to give your heart to Jesus? And if you have been a follower of Christ, but you have been hiding and you have been speaking to serpents, would you think about the change that needs to happen in your life today and how you might need to move forward and closer to Jesus Christ? People take off the masks. Think about who God created you to be and move into that purpose and promise today. My name is Cliff Thompson. We are The Render Gathering, helping you become. Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for choosing me. And I ask today for your forgiveness. I ask that you come into my life and replace anything that is not of you. I give over all of my behaviors, my thoughts, and my heart to you today. I receive your forgiveness and I receive the salvation that is mine through Jesus Christ. I believe that you came. I believe that you died. I believe that you were buried. And I believe that you rose again. I thank you for being my savior. And I thank you for this chance to walk with you and for you to walk with me the remainder of my days. I give you thanks and say, Amen.